in your community. Ladies and gentlemen, Rochester's own rock and roll legend Lou Graham is back home and he's getting ready to perform at the Kodak Center next month. We are excited to be joined by him this morning to learn more about the upcoming concert and what you can expect to see. Thank you so much for waking up and coming in. We really My appreciate pleasure. it. I'm an early riser and I wouldn't miss this for anything. Well, we, we like to hear that. So let's talk, let's dive right in and talk about the show. What can people expect? Well, it's 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 an all-star band, uh, uh, a group of musicians that that have made their name with other other groups, and uh, my brother Ben is on drums, uh, as he has been with me for over 20 years now, and and uh, we we do um, a collection of the Foreigner greatest hits, uh, the the hits from the Lou Graham solo albums, and uh, maybe something new thrown in, mm. you know. But, but it, it, it's, it's an exciting show, top to bottom, and we have a lot of fun doing it. Lou, you're from the Rochester area. What is it like being back home and, and getting ready to prepare for this big show? Well, I still live in Rochester, mm -hmm. uh, at least part of the year. And uh, it's, it's like I, I, I've always been here. So, so, so this, this truly is home for me. And, and uh, it's exciting to, to be able to perform uh, in front of the hometown audience. Uh, that, for one reason or another, I haven't been able to do that in almost 10 years. And, and uh, so this will be, this will be a, 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 a terrific homecoming and an and a exciting show. And, and um, it'll, it'll be something that, that uh, I'll, be, I'll be telling the fans that, that I won't be doing this much longer. You know, uh, I, I think nec next year's tour will just, just about be it for me. I've been doing this over 40 years. Let me ask, when you look back at, at the past four decades, as, as a kid, as that, as that teen and first in, in the city and then over in Gates, did you ever imagine that this, you would have the career you have? Not, not, not for a long time. I, I mean, uh, I, I was a... a Beatles fan when they first came over to the U.S. and I remember seeing them when I was 11 or 12 years old on the Ed Sullivan show a and uh, a light went off in my head and I said I didn't say to anybody I said to myself that's what I want to do for a living you know and and uh, you know I, I played uh, drums and in the Gates Chile marching band, and so on and so forth, and and then played drums in my first couple rock rock and roll groups as a young young teen, and, and then I started to to sing, and we got a better drummer, <laughs> and uh, uh, let me do the vocals, and and then the the exciting part was when when uh, my bandmates and I started writing songs. And, and uh, that 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 changed the game quite mm -hmm. a bit, you know, as, as opposed from uh, performing and doing other people's songs, and, and that was fun. But but when you start doing your own songs, it, it, you're 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 upping the stakes right. quite a bit. And and then you when you write your own songs, then you try to garner a record deal. And uh, I had a few of those in my time. We were black sheep. Uh, the Rochester band uh, um, back in back in the 80s 70s and 80s uh, uh, what was um, the first US band signed to Chrysalis Records a huge European label and uh, that was a, that was a great honor but they had they had no offices in the US they were they still had everything in Europe mm -hmm. and they were set they said they were set to make that jump to the US and set up offices in New York and LA and Nashville and Chicago. That way they could promote us properly. Ah. And so we had, a, we had a single out that was, was getting a lot of airplay, but it wasn't getting any promotion from them in the States. And we, we asked them why that is, and they said, well, we decided not to make the move to the US. Oh. And and so it just dawned on me that that we were left dangling, you know, <laughs> and we asked off the label, and were signed by Capitol Records. 
And that is where the second half of that story that we do want to hear will begin. We do have to take a quick break. We'll have your local headlines and then more with Lou Graham after that. Live from the 13 Wham News Studios, this is Good Day Rochester on Fox Rochester. 8.30 this Wednesday morning. Going to give you a look at the forecast on your screen there. There it is. The planning forecast this Wednesday as you step outside. Temperatures right around that 50 degree mark. We will see those numbers climb as we make our way through the day. A high of 69 degrees. We're back now with more from the extraordinary rock star Lou Graham ahead of his upcoming perform performance at the Kodak Center next month. Lou, we appreciate you coming in and we appreciate my pleasure. Yeah, you talking a little bit about how you got your start in the industry and, uh, you know, just a look back at your career. Did I hear you say six people in a Hyundai? Yes. No wonder they got caught. They probably couldn't steer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a lot of people in one of those cars. Yeah, yeah, a lot oh, of people goodness. in the goodness. It is, it is, kind of like a clown vehicle. Um, <laughs> yes. take, take us back. Uh, you had, when we were chatting a couple of minutes ago, you had just been signed with Capitol Records. Yes. Yes. How, so when, when did you realize that that was like, that was a pivotal moment in the career? When, when was that the turning point? Well, uh, I knew that they, they were um, a powerful label. They had the Beatles in, in the U.S. Uh, uh, when they first started out. And, and they they had a, a, a glorious career as as a, a, a rock album label, and, and I, I just I felt we, we were at the right place. Mm. When you take a look back, you just mentioned the Beatles. What are some other groups that had a really strong impact on you as a musician? Well, the Stones for sure. When when I was 15, the Stones came to Rochester for the one and only time. And uh, I sat at the kitchen table and told my mom and dad that I was going to go see the Stones with a couple of my friends if, if they approved. And, and they said, absolutely not. You know, they, 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 they said, uh, you know, uh, I don't, we, that, that your mom and I didn't, don't think it's a good idea that, that you go with friends to do that. I'd rather have you with some adults, you know. And I said, oh, geez. And I went up to my room. You know, they, they thought I went up to my room to, to sulk or something. I went up to a room, I got dressed in my, my tight jeans <laughs> and my, my British stompers, and uh, I ran down the stairs and ran out the door and started ru running down the street. This is in Gates, to Spencerport Road. And, and uh, when I was almost to Spencerport Road, I heard this yell, Lewis, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> And I heard that, and I smiled, I started to laugh, and then I started to, to s have cold sweats, you know? And I ran, I ran harder, you know, and, and I got to Spenceport Road, and I stuck my thumb out, and a, and a bunch of uh, young kids were, were driving to, to the show, too. So I got in with them, and I got to the show, I met my friends there, and uh, that, the Stones were, were awesome. And that was, that was the night that the chief of police I don't remember his name, but but he he stopped he stopped the show hmm. uh, about two thirds of the way through the Stone set. Stopped, went up on stage with three or four of the Rochester police, and and waved them off in the middle of a song. Can you ma imagine oh that? My Waving the Stones off in the middle of a song, and they stopped, and and he took Jagger's mic, and said he said, uh, he said I I expected all you people to be acting like ladies and gentlemen in the in this auditorium for for this concert he says but you but you you're loud and you're you're raucous and and, and uh he says uh and, and then they had spotlights on the chief of police and you see something spinning going towards the stage and something hit him in the eye, and it was a pack of gum. Oh, boy. You know the old packs of yeah, gum? Yeah, yeah. Hit him in the eye, and he fell backwards, and, and, and the, the other policeman caught him, and, and he, he, he got up, and he grabbed the mic, and he says, this show is over. He ended oh, the show? Goodness. He ended the show, and, and Jagger was, was just going crazy. 
you know, I'm sure nothing like that had ever happened to him. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we all know rock and roll is, it, it's a dangerous. Oh yeah, but, but, but uh, that it should happen in Rochester was, was really a black eye for us, you know. Really? That's oh my incredible. goodness. Yep. So I, do, I, I need to know, and I'm sure millions of people online need to know, Foreigner, not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What gives? Boy, I get. I have to. I tell the story a lot. Let me tell you. Do you? Yep. Uh, um, Mick Jones and the the uh, director of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame were very close friends. Families were close. They used to run together. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, have dinner with the families and see each other socially a lot. They were they were good friends. Um, when when we didn't get inducted with our peers, and, and uh, most of the most of the bands in 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 the area that we were uh, um, successful mm -hmm. in ha had all gotten into the the, the uh, Hall of Fame. Um, Mick and our manager went to see he, he, the guy who is the head of the Hall of Fame is also the, the owner of Rolling Stone mm -hmm. magazine. I can't remember his name offhand. Um, so they went, they went to see at an appointment they went to see him and asked him if there was something we had done or said or something that, that insulted him. He, he couldn't understand why we weren't uh, brought up brought up for for um, induction a and uh, it started to get heated apparently I was not there but this is what I heard a and uh, it got real heated and when our manager and Mick got up to leave he, he said it'll be a cold day in hell before Foreigner gets into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame oh wow oh yeah and um, that that was about 25, 30 years ago now. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah. Well, listen. I mean, you're in our Hall of Fame here at 13 Wham and in Rochester's yes, Hall of Fame because you're in. I mean, you're Lou Graham. You're incredible. You have a, a you. storied, phenomenal career, um, and you're one of the bright spots of our community. You know what? Mick and I were inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. which is extremely prestigious. And uh, we feel that that's a great honor. Well, I'm sure it is. We're honored that you came and mm -hmm. oh. joined us this mm -hmm. morning to chat. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Really fast, for those who want to see the show, when and where is it? It's October 7th. Correct. At the, at the Kodak Theater Excellent. in Rochester, New York. Perfect. 8 o'clock. There are tickets available. We'll post all of the information you need to know to see Lou Graham perform live on our website, foxrochester.com, after the show this morning. It is 8.38. When we come back, Marty has weather first after every break.